Welcome back once again to your YouTube channel ENC Achievement. Last class we had a discussion on the third unit beyond the horizon. So this episode we are going to learn about the first constituent or the element of the third unit that is sunrise on the hill. The poem sunrise on the hills let us know something about the W.H. Longfellow, the poet. So actually, W.H. Longfellow, born in 1807 and died in 1882, was an essential or an influential American poet. Not only a poet, a translator and professor at Harvard University. And during his lifetime, Longfellow was considered the best of all American poets. And his work was widely translated and published in various other languages also. The poem Sunrise from the Hills presents the experience of the poet as he watches the sunrise amidst the hills. That is what he is uh, about W.H. Longfellow. And uh, before going for the poem, let us try some of the important words or the difficult words for the better understanding of the poem. So besides is the word you will come across while you go through the poem. Affect something in a bad way, harmful way, that is beset. Another is a bitter. Bitter is a gentle a kind of a small pickled bird of heron bird's family. That is a bitter. You will come across this word while we analyze the poem. Cascade. Cascade is a waterfall. Cascade. Cascade is a waterfall. And cliff. Cliff, a high area of rock with the where is deep to the side? That is what we call it as a cliff. Then dinkle. Dinkle is a deep wooden narrow valley. A deep wooden narrow valley is called a dinkle. Horn. The great horned owl of America, another bird. Then lance. Lance a very long, thin pointed weapon. Okay, which uh, army or uh, enemies are uh, used uh, during the fight or battle. Pinnacle. Pinnacle is the highest peak point, top of a very high mountain. That is Pinnacle. Then Dai. Dai is actually your possessive form of uh, uh, Dao Dai. Dao you Dai your possessiveness. Then Wudat. Covered with the trees. Wooden is covered with the trees. Then mellow. You will come across the word mellow. That is smooth and uh, soft. Mellow. Then gun is there. A word that will come across while reading the poem. That is a valley. And there is another word. Is yes, e r e sear. Being dried and withered. Sear. Yes, E R E C E R. That word also you will come across uh, during the time C E R. While teaching the poem C E R. C E R is actually uh, being uh, dried and uh, withered. That is what. Okay. Now, we will go for the poem. So, travel is in fact an eye opener, a revelation. Gathering new experience. It opens up new refreshing snapshots before us and often help us change our philosophy of life, thought of our life, and views of our life. Let us read Henry Wadsworth. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow H.W. 
Longfellow, Henry Wadsworth's Longfellow. The first stanza I go for reading. I stood upon the hills when heaven's wide arch was glorious with the sun's returning march and the woods were brightened and soft gales went forth to kiss the sun-clad waves the clouds were far beneath me bathed in light they gathered midway round to the wounded hate and in their fading glory shone like a host in battle overthrown as many a pinnacle with a shifting glance through the gray mist thrust up its shattered latch and rocking on the cliff was left and the dark pine blasted bare and cleft the veil of clouds was lifted and below glowed the rich valley and the rivers flow was darkened by the forest shade or glistened in the white cascade where upward in the mellow blush of day the noisy bittern wheeled his spiral way so let us see what does the first stanza of the poem describe the first stanza is giving visual images what the poet sees while standing on the hills upon the hills the poet was standing on the hills and the sky is here considered as heaven's wide arch was glorious with the sun's returning march you see it was a very glorious moment because the sun is coming back like a march, like soldiers are marching in the battlefield. Remember here, the sun is compared to a knight, K-N-I-G-T, means a soldier. And nature is compared to a princess or sweetheart. And woods were brightened, woods were brightened. That means the morning time, the sun rays are going to brighten the forest. And the poet here remembers or just uh, highlighting gales, so strong winds softly passing, went forth to kiss, uh, to cover and touch the sun-covered whales, sun-clad whales means uh, sun-covered valleys. The clouds were far beneath me because the poet was standing upon the hills. So clouds were beneath under him. Bathed in light actually, these clouds were just glistened or shined with the light rays of the sun. They gathered midway around the wooded height. These clouds just gathered on the midway around the wooded height, on the top of the trees. And in their fading glory, actually, the trees were not shining because they were covered with the clouds, shone like a horse in battle overthrown. Actually, they were defeated armies in the battle or war. As many a pinnacle with the shifting glance through the gray mist thrust up its shattered lands. Finally, they are like defeated enemies. They are going back, fading away. And rocking on the cliff was left, and a dark pine, pine blasted bare and cleft. Now only the poet could understand that uh, those trees were pine trees, uh, and they were very bright and uh, having more beauty upon. The veil of cloud was lifted, and below glowed the rich valley, and the river's flow was darkened by the forest shade. Or glistened in the white cascade, where upward in the mellow blush of day, 
the noisy bittern wheeled his spider way you see clouds were completely removed valleys were shorn or glistening with the rays of the sun it is going to be the morning and the waterfalls uh, he could see white uh, waterfalls uh, and uh, where the poet could see in the blush of the day the noisy bittern that means a small petted bird of heron family is making its uh, movement uh, noisy bittern wheeled his uh, spiral way so that is the end of the first stanza so we go to, we get more what do we call it as a visual image sir now we go for the auditory images in the second stanza i heard the distant waters dashing waters dashing flowing and spraying sound i saw the current whirl and flash the movements and also the course of the waters of the rivers and richly by the blue lake's silver beach the woods were bending with a silent reach then over the vale over the valleys with the gentle swell the music of the village bell there is also the sound the music of the village bell came sweetly to the echo giving hills and they are just banging on the hills and they are echoing the sound of the village bell and the wild horn another bird whose voice the woodland fills actually the forest is filled by the sound of this wild horn was ringing to the merry shout that faint and far the glen sent out finally they are echoing and the den the hill that is sending out where answering to the sudden shot this small thin small through thick cleaved leaves branched from the dimple broke that is also again visual as well as more auditory images describing the nature when it is morning then the last stanza the poet is asking the readers especially the modern century people if thou art to war if you are completely tired of your day to day modern life and hard beset you are completely covered with your tensions and problems and worries and mental disorders with the sorrows that thou wouldst forget if thou would read a lesson that will keep thy heart from fainting and thy soul from sleep go to the woods and hills no tears dim the sweet look that nature wears you see finally very good advice to the modern worry struck people the poet is calling them if you are covered with the more tensions and problems and worries go to the nature and the nature will heal you of all your tensions of problems and worries no tears after that dim the sweet look that nature wears nature wears or puts on a sweet look ah that look will dim no tears dim the sweet look so no tears of cannot dim it the sweet look that nature wears so finally the third stanza of the poem comes to an end please watch the class with the textbook we will come with uh, so many textual activities and uh, very good answers of this poem and uh, share the link to your friends ask them to be in touch with the ENC you made and get benefited and be the A plus scorers wish you all the best thank you